Howdy folks, Shell Presto de Baggio here, hopping on the Spider Sona bandwagon. Today we're going to draw a full-blown 90s inspired Spider Girl and her spider bite sized sidekick web slinging past some skyscrapers. While I'm drawing, I'll tell you my further thoughts on Arteza Real Brush Pens, talk a bit about how I decided what my Spider Sona should look like, and talk about using yourself as a drawing reference. Okay, so the best, hardest, and most fun part of drawing any Spider-Man or woman is the posing. You've got an ultra-flexible human being who moves like a bug. There was a reason why Toy Biz made Spider-Man to be its first Marvel hero to have, I believe it was, 15 points of articulation. I say that nothing today. Um, for a while it was the standard even. Uh, but Hasbro has really been letting us down and dialing it back to very limited articulation lately. But it ain't gonna look like Spidey if he doesn't have some crazy pose. And almost every signature Spidey pose is an advanced one. Now, of course, you can go looking for poses in uh, pose books magazines and uh, movies. You can reference comic books. Poses are a, a whole big topic in and of themselves. But the easiest and cheapest way to get the exact pose that you want is to either A, have a friend or family member or someone close to you who is willing to let you pose them like a doll and then take a photo, or Unfortunately, because oftentimes when you're an artist, the people around you are shy um, or think you're a little nuts, you have to make the pose yourself and take a picture of yourself. And that's one of those easier said than done moments. So here are my best tips for using yourself as a reference. Um, the easiest one is usually look in a mirror, but I tend to find that it's really, really hard to uh, draw details about yourself while you're trying to hold a pose in a mirror. So we'll just put that one aside for right now. Ideally, you'll have someone else to hold the camera and take the photo. My husband took the one I'm using here. But your parent or sibling or significant other or friend is probably not an artist. You could make an awesome pose, but get a very poor shot, say, at the wrong angle if someone else is taking the photo. So I recommend making a little stick figure sketch of the sort of pose you're going for and hand it to the person taking the photo before they take the picture. Then tell them to move around you or raise or lower the camera as needed to get as close to that stick figure pose you've handed them on the paper as possible. If you don't have someone else to take the photo of you for you, I recommend using the video function of your camera or cell phone instead of the automatic timer. With the timer taking still photos, you never know exactly when the photo will snap or how long you have to hold the pose. With a video, you can make multiple poses in one go or rotate yourself slightly to get different angles all at once. Just remember to hold each pose for a good second or two and rotate very slowly so it's easier to pause on the exact pose you want when you play it back as video. And remember, if you take a video but need to zoom in after the fact, you can put it on your computer or tablet or whatever, uh, take a screenshot and zoom in on the saved screenshot image. Also, whenever I video myself, I'll do it in front of a shelf or window or table, so I can put two objects, like two books or knickknacks or a salt and a pepper shaker or whatever, on the shelf or table where the edges of the camera frame are. That way, I know where I have to stand to stay in the camera frame. Because it can be pretty hard to know where to stand if you don't have a playback screen. 
Oh, and if you're trying to make a pose that's difficult to do standing up or balancing on one foot or you have to jump to make it or something, uh, use a chair or lay down and have someone hold the camera above you. You can't fly or web sling, so you have to get creative about how to fake such poses. Obviously, in the photo that I uh, was taking from for this image, I was sitting in a chair. If you can't get photos of yourself, um, I also like to use action figures in a pinch. The more articulation, the better. Uh, superhero figures wearing skin-tight spandex work best because the ones in clothes uh, where they have like a leather jacket or jeans sculpted on them, uh, the folds sculpted on their clothes may not match how the clothes would actually fold in that particular pose and that can throw you off a bit. But you can use a clothed figure if you know how to adjust for that. However, action figures can be really stiff, no matter how many points of articulation they have. Um, there are just some poses they can't and won't make. And in that case, you'll have to supplement with a mirror. If you are using yourself as a reference, especially remember not to be discouraged if you don't look like the character you're trying to draw. I'm a small female, but I've used myself to pose for seven feet tall, beer-bellied men made of stone. Human bone structures uh, between males and females, tall people and short people, all sorts of people, are close enough that any photo of any person should assist you in drawing a pose. Although, yeah, it takes practice to bulk up or thin down a pose, but it's still absolutely doable, no matter what body type you have working with you for poses. So what was I thinking with my Spider Sona design? Anyone who knows me could tell you that superhero t-shirts and flannel shirts are the staples of my wardrobe, if not the pure foundation that my entire wardrobe is built upon. So I knew I wanted to incorporate something that looked like a button-down flannel shirt into my spider sona. That webbing and plaid don't look horribly dissimilar from each other worked in my favor. Blue and silver are two of my three favorite colors. The other is orange, if you're wondering. So I wanted to add them to the traditional spidey look as well. Also, since I was a child of the late 80s and early 90s, and I'm a fan of the Sex Pistols. Of course, I think cutting the sleeves off everything and fingerless gloves are all the rage. So I threw that in there, too. Then for the mask, I had to do the Jim Lee-style Cyclops Gambit Jean Grey uh, mask thing, where it's missing the top quarter of the mask, so your hair shows through, and you start to wonder whether these people really have or want secret identities. But, I believe that pairing that look with a full face mask works. And I have to say, I really dig how it looks in the end. Seriously though, Jean and Gambit didn't even have masks. What was the point of having something covering their forehead and the back of their head and neck? Of course, at the time, Jean Grey wasn't going by Phoenix or Marvel Girl, she was also just going by Jean Grey. So I don't know. The Chuck Taylor sneakers, well I I wear them everywhere unless it's snowing or it's church on Christmas or Easter. Uh, I like how thin and not padded the soles are and well they come in a lot of fun designs. I won't pretend that doesn't factor into my decision. So that obviously had to go into my design as well. The hardest part of this design was figuring out which areas should be blue and which ones should be red. In the end, I left it up to contrast. I made the shoes and gloves red so I could have some pops of bright color at the edges of the drawing, and so my feet didn't get lost in the darkness at the bottom of the page. 
I made the sock on the leg closest to the camera red so it appeared closer and more dynamic and so it didn't get lost in the blue of the shorts and flannel. It's worth noting too that I originally was going to have the socks be the same color until my husband saw what I was drawing and said, you're going to make the socks two different colors, right? Your socks never match. And he's right. They never do. And it's a curse that has fallen to my son because I'm in charge of his socks every day. And I wanted this to be a highly stylized but still honest interpretation of me. So how could I deny the world my mismatched socks? All right, let's talk about those Arteza brush pens for a second, uh, or Arteza real brush pens, I believe they're called. I said in a previous video that I wanted to see if you can use them without water, like a stand-in for alcohol markers, even though they're water-based, watercolor-ish pens. And the answer I've discovered is yes, but only if you don't want any really light colors. I strove to use as little water in this piece as humanly possible, and I didn't use any at all until I got to the skin. I lament the lack of really light colors in the Arteza sets in my full review, and the blues. Now, Arteza does give you a water brush with this set, but I've always had a hard time controlling water brushes, so I can't tell you if, by incorporating a water brush, if you could use it exactly as a colorless blender. But I can tell you that the ink from these brush pens does not warp paper the way pure water does, and that incorporating water does warp your paper, and you'll never reach the lightest tones without using water. Likewise, even if you're using a water brush, you'll still need a bunch of paper towels to get the color off of it between blends. So there's no way to lose that extra bit of hardware inherent in water coloring because I think you'd have to rub the paper with water uh, too much to clean off the tip of your water brush and then to prevent the paper from warping you'd have to dab it with a paper towel anyway. So paper towels go with watercolor or paper towels go with water brushes and using the water but you don't need them if you're just using the brush pens with their ink. But I have to say that these blend beautifully even without water. The window with the yellow in the background and all the reds and grays were all blended without water and I think they look wonderfully vibrant. I do still highly recommend these Arteza real brush pens and do still think you get a nice alcohol marker look out of them with the vibrancy inherent in alcohol markers. You just need mixed, me mixed media or watercolor paper, water, and paper towels to do it. But the learning curve is still way easier than straight up watercolors. I didn't go into this drawing with the thought to add my son. I'm not sure why or how it happened, but there he is. It felt right once I got him on the page though, so I'm glad I went with that whim. Victor spends a lot of time in overalls, loves wrestling both dogs and people, and gets overly excited by Mexican wrestling. So I gave him a mask that fused Spider-Man and Blue Demon together. Hopefully in three or five years, he'll think this is cool. And hopefully in 15 years, he won't think this is the lamest thing I've ever done. But we'll see. Blue Demon is a Mexican wrestler, by the way. And uh, Blue Demon Jr. is still currently a wrestler. My spider Sona's name is Threads, by the way. So named after my original superhero, Threads, who's a lot like Spider-Man only even more socially awkward, and he's been bitten by a caterpillar instead of a spider. Therefore, he doesn't have any of the cool powers like super strength or a spider sense to warn him of danger. You know, the things that make you useful after you've webbed up a bad guy that stop him from dragging you down the street with him. I have a strange sense of humor. Threads will appear in future East End Irregulars books. 
Victor Spidersona is simply named Blue Spider, with a notable accent on Spider, like Blue Demon. The only real problem I encountered with this drawing was what to make the silver lines with on the mask and flannel and such. I tried a jelly roll pen and the color was nice. I generally recommend these pens. But the pen tip was just not fine enough for this particular image. I regretted not using my Kuratake Ganze Starry set for the mask lines, but I was afraid I couldn't make an even unwavering line with a brush. Uh, I just thought there would be a control issue there. In the end, I edited the silver mask lines on the computer to make them a little thinner, and I think it looks better for it in the final image. Alright folks, I hope you enjoyed this vision of uh, me. Uh, this is a pretty fun challenge, and I look forward to finally checking out this film soon. It looks like a lot of fun, and, well, if you told me 15 years ago that Spider-Ham would be in a major motion picture, I would not have believed you. Between the logistics of babysitters and living 40 to 60 miles from theaters, I miss a lot of superhero or sci-fi movies these days. I did manage Alita Battle Angel recently, which I most highly recommend. And I will, mark my word, see Godzilla in theaters, because kaiju must be seen as close to real size as possible. But most of my viewing is on the small screen in my living room these days as rentals, or, uh, you know, released after the fact. I do co-write books with my husband about our own original heroes. I previously mentioned the East End Irregulars, where our zoomorphic caterpillar teen threads will appear. You can join our other superpowered teens, Torrent, Corona, and Mysterious X, in the first two volumes, both illustrated by yours truly, as they discover the eerie side of Pittsburgh. Book sales help support the channel, folks, as do the free-to-give but much-loved likes, subscribes, and comments. Have you drawn a spider sona of yourself? If so, let me know in the comments, because I think these things are neat to look at. And if radioactivity worked the way Stan Lee thought it did, and gave superpowers instead of, um, death, uh, what irradiated animal would you want to be bitten by? Alright folks, I'll leave off there. Let me know if you liked this piece or have any questions about anything in this video. And most of all, have an amazing, spectacular, and awesome day. Presto, over and out. Younger me would have definitely said I want my irradiated animal to be a mammal because mutations could be weird and I'd want to keep it as close to human as possible. But looking at this six-armed Spider-Man and being a parent, I bet he could hold a baby, eat a hot meal, and read a book, drink some water, all at the same time. Heck, even just two of those activities at the same time would be great. So maybe, just maybe, I would go with Spider, but only if you guaranteed me the extra arms.